This afternoon, we'd like to honor our 2023 senior class, including Brandon Briones, J.R. Chow, Riley Luce, and Zach Martin. Before we introduce our seniors, we'd also like to recognize our three fifth-year gymnasts who were honored last year as part of the 2020... Hello, everybody, and welcome to Burnham Pavilion, home of the Stanford Cardinal. Pull up a seat, get a drink. Get ready to enjoy the Stanford men's gymnastics team going against Berkeley and Illinois. It's going to be a heater tonight. Uh, my name is Scott Burns. Joining me tonight, two-time NCAA champion and Stanford alum, Brian Perla. Brian, how's it going? It's going great. It's going to be a great meet, and uh, I'm excited. It's Stanford's senior night, so we got a, a good group of seniors Um graduating and putting on their final performance in Burnham and uh, it's gonna be a great time. Illinois has not been out to Stanford in quite a long time uh, and I'm great to, I'm happy to be here. I can't wait, Scott, it's gonna be a good time, isn't it? Fans, one more time, Ian Gunther, Brody Malone, and Max Zotz. And now we'd like to honor the class of 2023, beginning with Brandon Briones of Gilbert, Arizona. Brandon is a four-time NCAA All-American, twice earning the honor in the all-around and on vault. Briones first onto the scene in 2020, garnering a pair of CGA Gymnast of the Week honors and four National Rookie of the Week selections en route to being named the 2020 CGA Rookie of the Year. A member of the U.S. Senior National Team during his time on the farm, Briones finished fifth in the all-around at the 2021 U.S. Olympic Team Trials to earn a spot as an alternate for Team USA at the Tokyo Olympics. He was also fourth in the all-around of the 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships. After missing his junior year due to injury, Brandon has returned this year to once again help lead the Cardinal, including winning MPSF Specialist of the Week on January the 24th. In the classroom, Brandon is currently working on applying his knowledge gained from his mechanical engineering coursework toward his senior capstone project. The project is sponsored by Volkswagen and is focused on developing solutions for accessibility to autonomous vehicles. Specifically, his group is working to allow for wheelchair entry, exit, and securement into driveless vehicles. Brandon feels his Stanford experience has left him with a greater appreciation for his support system, his family, friends, and those around him every day in the gym. With their support, he has been able to persevere through some extremely difficult times and has learned how to be resilient in the face of adversity. Through the many highs and lows at Stanford, the coaches, peers, teammates, and athletic training staff have been with him every step of the way and has been instrumental to his growth and development as a person. He will cherish the amazing memories and experiences they've shared forever. Brandon says that Stanford has given him the opportunity to pursue excellence in academics, athletics, and in life, and he feels extremely fortunate to be able to push forward himself to new heights every day. His experience at Stanford has increased his confidence in his ability to learn and improve himself and has taught him that you can always be capable of more than you think, so long as you work hard for it. A two-time CGA All-American Scholar Athlete and an MPSF All-Academic Selection, Brandon carries a 3.95 GPA as a mechanical engineering major. After graduation, Brandon plans to continue training for the 2024 Olympics. Brandon is accompanied today by his parents, Dio and Lori. Fans, give it up, Brandon Briones. Our next senior is J.R. Chow of Houston, Texas. J.R. has been a staple of Stanford's top-ranked parallel bars lineup this year, including posting a career-best 14.750 at the Rocky Mountain Open, contributing across events during his career. Chow has won four event titles in his career at Stanford. A leader on the team, J.R. was voted as team captain by his peers prior to the start of the season. While on the farm, Chow has served as a member of the Stanford Athletics 
advisory committee to help support a strong community among Stanford student athletes by organizing and facilitating social events. In 2022, JR volunteered for Children's Champions where he taught gymnastics to underserved children in the Bay Area. He lists his most rewarding project he's done while at Stanford as dedicating countless hours to Stanford's project realization lab where he has learned design and manufacturing techniques for physical products. He particularly enjoys sand casting medical grade scraping tools that he continues to use every day to help with injury prevention in his training. A three-time CGA All-American Scholar Athlete, Chow carries a 3.71 GPA. JR's key takeaway from his time at Stanford, he's had many challenges and many great moments. The common factor of what got him through those challenges and what made the great moments so memorable is the people that were with him through it all. He encourages his teammates to rely on the support around you and when you need it and celebrate them when you come out on the other side. He wants to say thank you to everyone who's been along for the ride, his family, his coaches, his girlfriend, and of course his brothers on the team. JR will be turning to Stanford in the fall to finish his Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering with a focus of product realization. After graduation, he'll be looking forward to working in Manufacturing Engineering or with his brother Max. JR is accompanied by his parents, John and Kristen. Thank you for your cooperation, JR fans. Give it up, JR Chow! Our next senior is Riley Luce of El Dorado Hills, California. Riley is a seven-time NCAA All-American, including an all-around selection in 2020, and won the 2022 national title and still rings the 14.600. His three-time still rings All-American, he's also been loud on the floor twice, and once on horizontal bars. A member of the U.S. Senior National Team during his time at Stanford, Riley guided USA to the 2022 Pan American Championship while finishing second on floor and third on steel rings. He also leads the U.S. to gold at the 2022 DTP Polko Mixed Cup and qualified for event finals on floor, rings and vault, and at the 2021 Copa World Challenge Cup where he debuted new skills on pommel horse and floor. Luce placed second at the 2021 U.S. Winter Cup to earn a spot on the U.S. Senior National Team where he captured the event title on floor and vault while finishing top eight at all six events. As a student on the farm, Riley focuses on building his analytical and data skills through his coursework. For his final project, he worked on building an online dashboard for a nonprofit against human trafficking called Three Strands. This project was the culmination of the work he had done at Stanford. Through the Haas Center, he will also be doing a cardinal service quarter working for UCube, a math education Nonprofit over the summer to make learning data science more accessible. He has also enjoyed taking a wide range of classes from biology to dance courses for fun. He maintains a strong online social media presence through creating TikToks and other media called videos. He loves spreading his passion for gymnastics with the world and he hopes to spread interest and makes men's gymnastics more accessible. Riley says Stanford has left him with an appreciation for interdisciplinary work and the value of time management. He has learned how his course of studies can have large impacts in the world around him from sustainability to healthcare. However, to understand his interdisciplinary approach, he has learned how to carefully manage his time. Balancing his gymnastics and athletic career comes with dedication and passion. He's learned to these through these endeavors are worth it. A three-time CGA All-American Scholar Athlete, Luce carries a 3.78 GPA as a Management Science Engineering major. After graduation, Riley plans to find a way to be involved in the gymnastics world while also starting his career. He would like to work in analytics and potentially with a company pursuing sustainability. Riley is unable to be here today as he's currently traveling to represent Team USA at the FIG Apparatus World Cup later this week. Here to accept on his behalf are Riley's parents, Steph and Gray. Thank you for your contributions, Riley fans. One more time for Riley Luce. Our final senior of the night is Zach Martin from Elk Grove, California. Zach is a three-time NCAA All-American on vault, including finishing top three of the NCAA National Championships the last two years and claiming a runner-up finish in 2021 with a score of 14.900. Saving his best for last, Martin hit a career-best 
15.100 to win the pole title at the Rocky Mountain Open this year. Zach has also been a contributor on the floor for the Cardinal during his career, posting a career best of 14.200. Last summer, he chose to travel to Japan not only to see family that he hadn't seen in a decade, but also to train with some of the best Japanese gymnasts in the world. While in Japan, he met four of the five 2016 Japanese Olympic team members. Zach lists one of his main takeaways from Stanford as being the personal growth that he's received while competing on the team. He loves the person that he is today, and he's turned from shy and unsure to confident and more outgoing due to the experience that he's received through competition and spending time with the team. A two-time CGA All-America Scholar Athlete, Martin will return to Stanford next quarter to finish his degree in computer science. Zach is joined today by his mom, Tomomi, and Yevgeny. Thank you for your, your contributions, Zach. Fans, give it up for Zach Martin. To the 2023 Stanford Senior Class, we want to thank you once more for all your leadership and hard work in the gym and in the classroom. Fans, one more time for Brandon Briones, J.R. Chow, Riley Luce, and Zach Martin. Once again, welcome to this afternoon's Senior Meet featuring the California Golden Bears, the Illinois Illini, and your Stanford Cardinal. Starting on Pommel Horse, please welcome the University of California Golden Bears. How's it going? Starting on Still Rings, please welcome the University of Illinois Illini. <laughs> on floor exercise will be the defending three-time NCAA national champions, your Stanford Cardinal! Head coach of the Cardinal is Tom Galini. He's assisted by Mark Freeman and Grant Breckenridge. Welcome back everybody. Looks like we are doing our two minute one touch right now before the event start. Uh, welcome again back to Burnham Pavilion. It's going to be a heck of a competition today. Uh, we're just taking a look at the ro rosters. Do you have anything to say about the uh, starting rosters here on these first couple of events? Yeah, so I mean, the big thing that we're going to be looking at is so we're post winter cup right now so we're going to be these are the lineups that are starting to fall into place for ncaa's that are all, all these teams today are really looking to ncaa's and, and each meet from now until then is, is a prep meet for that um so so stanford if we if we start with their lineup um all five guys here are fully you know this is this is a close lineup to what might be at NCAA's. Um, and then, you know, Scott, we were talking about Illinois a little bit earlier, and, and, and their lineup on rings is stacked as well. So at the end of this rotation, we could see a pretty close race between Stanford on floor and definitely uh, Illinois on, on rings. And then uh, as far as Calgo, what, do, what are your thoughts with that? I mean, when you, when you talk about starting on Palm Horse, you and I both know that, that that's a, a nerve-wracking event, but also one of the events that can kind of make or break a team. Um, and, you know, Cal is, isn't is weak on Palm Horse. They actually have some pretty darn good guys, a couple guys that are actual Palm Horse specialists that can put up uh, 
pr pretty high numbers. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, if they hit on Pommel Horse, it could be a, a close meet after the first event um, between all three teams. But obviously, you know, Stanford, uh, we're looking for Stanford to really come out and show, show a really big number like they did at the beginning of the year, it being after Winter Cup. Um, so we'll see how long these other two teams can uh, hang in there with the uh, giant that Stanford is. Yeah, I mean, Pommel Horse is one of those events that teams either really like starting on or really don't like starting on. Um, you know, it, it's if you get a good five, five up, five um, hit on Pommel Horse to start out a meet, it's a great way, and, and you've got it behind you, and you, you can just move forward um, from there. Uh, and, but on the other hand, if you start out with a rocky start, then you're just trying to tread water. You're trying to make up, you know, th those those lost points the rest of the meet. Um, so it's it's a it's a proving ground this this meet for for Cal to see, you know, how the, how they handle that pressure. Yeah, and I also think that like it's really going to be an actual key event today because you got uh, you got Illinois with uh, your former teammate Ian Skirky and and he just come, came off Winter Cup and hit hit a big uh, big event and made himself on national team and so I think that you know Illinois can really kind of step on it when they get to Pommel Works and that's where Stanford's going to have to watch out and make sure that they really uh, you know keep their foot down on the pedal. All right, here we go. First routines from all three. Try to keep everybody updated. We got three screens going at once. Do our best to let you all know what's going on. Zach Martin on floor starting out for Stanford. When you're a senior, so really you're going out here, uh, you know, like obviously you want to hit, but I mean, are you really thinking about this being like kind of a last meet because you still have NCAAs to go through? You got a lot going on, right? Yeah, so that's an interesting, you know, topic. I think that I never thought about that. I never went out there and said, oh, this is the last time in this, you know, um, in this arena. I was always focused on the gymnastics at hand. I think afterwards you, you know, you, you salute, you, you go up there and, you know, you you finish your routine and, and you walk off and you're like, yeah, this is the last time I'll, you know, salute and, and, and compete in this arena. And, then, you know, what flashes in front of your eyes is all the memories with your team and, and with those routines. Um, but I don't think that a lot of the seniors are probably, that's, that's their biggest focus right now. I think a lot of them is putting out a team score for at least, you know, yeah, for, for all these teams, is putting out a team score that, that ranks them in, in some of the top in the country, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, make, it makes a ton of sense. I mean, if you're a real competitor, then, you know, obviously every routine you're trying to treat the same way, whether it's uh, NCAA championships or the first meet of the year. Obviously, Zach just hit that routine. Um, looked like Tyler Shimizu came off the of Morris and then had a little bit of a tough time with his dismount, making his dismount smooth the handstand. Um, Kyle over on rings from Illinois looked like he had a pretty solid routine uh, landed dismount with a step so uh, you know Palma horse obviously that's not not what you how you wanted to start there for Cal I'm sure they were hoping to hit all five but that's how it goes like we were talking about make it or break it there on that event yeah totally I mean I think that um, when you're looking to craft these lineups and, and we you know we see Zach first and and then Tyler and, and, and Kyle, you really, the first guy up, you really want to hit. You know, you, you want to get into a groove of the meet. Not only are you the first guy up on that event, but you're the first guy up on in the entire meet. So you want to set the tone and you want to get into a groove. You know, for, for now Ian Lasik to follow um, and Ryan on rings, you know, you want to be able to get into a groove and, and set your other teammates up for, for them to follow and then for them to have to match what you just did. Your performance, they have to one up, right? Oh yeah, it's got to be it's got to be a training performance as really to get to that full cool team score. I think by the end uh, for each one of these teams, and obviously that has to, some of it has to do with the makeup of the team. Whoa, big pass, big out of bounds. Sometimes that's all right. Stay on your feet, bounds, right? Yeah, I mean, I think that one thing we should talk about is 
start values. And when we're, you know, when we're looking at the display on the bottom here of these three scores, what those start values mean and why maybe a 4, 5, a 4.5 on rings is a different type of start value than a 4.5 on floor, if that makes sense. And, and Scott, what do you have to say, what do you think about, you know, putting together routines with different start values based on that event? Um, definitely, I mean, pommel horse, when you're crafting a routine, obviously there's some guys that are, you know, top in the country, and we'll see them today, later, like Ian Skirky on pommel horse, that have astronomical start values. But what do you think about when we compare these start values and, and execution scores on different events? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's definitely a debate that goes on in gymnastics all the time. You know, you can, you can put out a really huge start value, and if you don't make that thing look very good, then it really doesn't mean a lot. So, you know, you could put out a 7.0 difficulty, which means it's a 17.0 that you're starting from. And if you, it's just horrible and you're falling on every skill and you score an 11, I don't know if that's much better than a guy who has a 14 and scores a 13, right? But on the other hand, it gives you the chance to score that 17. So, you know, when you got when you got these teams with different star values, you got events with different star values, it comes down to, do you have both? Can you put out really high difficulty and can you execute it really well? Can you stay on the events? Because we all know coming off the event is one point off right off the bat. So, you know, I mean, w you know, when you're talking about that as far as uh, as a strategy, it's really a battle between the coaches. You know, what are these coaches letting letting these gymnasts do or asking these gymnasts to do? Um, are, what are they allowing them to uh, show in execution? Um, and, and then you get that end score and you know you made a right choice or a wrong choice on on what that gymnast decided to do for a routine. So, uh, so one of these there's no real right there. this, So one of these routines I'm going to point out is right happening right now on floor. Asher Hong. Uh, we just saw two world class uh, passes, um, literally world class, as one of the world team members um, now at Stanford as well. Um, I mean, I think that. As these routines go and, we, and these scores come in today, some of the top scores in the country this year have been around the 420 mark. Uh, that's a team total. And what that averages out to is a 14. A 14 -0 on every routine will get you a team score of 420. And so while, while not all three of these teams are going to do that, the difference even between uh, a 13 and a 14 Right, that one point, a, a 13 average is going to get you a 390. So that's a 30 point difference. You know, so, so you can easily see how after 30 routines, every single one of those times that's what, as we're in this second half of the year and as we're past Winter Cup, that's what these teams, that's what these coaches, that's what these athletes are, are focused on. Every, you know, one tenth is on every every routine is a three point total difference at the end of the year. So I think that while well, you might say, oh, he, he just stepped out of bounds there, if everyone does that after the course of 30 routines, you, know, you can see the, the big impact of those individual tents. Does that make sense? Yeah, you definitely don't want that. You know, I mean, it's obviously not good to go out of bounds, but I think uh, in the sense of how powerful that pass was, it was better than him maybe falling. I feel like it was yeah. it was a slight it was a slight save exactly. in that sense, but. <laughs> Going back to it and looking at these star values, I mean, you look at Stanford's star values right now, and all of them above fives to start out with, and then you look over at you look over at Illinois, and you got a bunch of 14s, and then a, a 13, and that could be from not getting credit for a, a skill. It's it's going to be tough to keep up with Stanford when you have that situation going on where you're already starting starting below. So those star those high star values really do mean something. And most of the guys at this level can execute those star values when they put them out. Definitely. Nice stick on rings there. Yeah, that was big. I think Cal's coming out of this uh, after that first first routine miss a little bit. They're starting to, starting to put it down here on Pommel Horse. Yeah, those are great scores. 13-3, 13-2 from a 15-4 and a 15-5 start. Let's see if Aiden can keep it up. 
And Aiden's one of their specialists. I mean, he has scored a, a 14 recently, so that that could come into the mix here. Whoa, Asher with a 14-1-5 on floor. Obviously, you deserve it so. High star value like we talked about, 16.0 star value. Um, that was a great set just, by like, Aiden on Pommel Horse. Yeah, it was. That could be another 14 there again for Cal. So, Cal, three big hit routines. Um, kind of keeping it close. Yeah, I mean, again, like we said right in the beginning, Pommel was a testing event to start off on. Um, and so, while, while Tyler maybe faltered a little bit, it's, it's awesome to see that they uh, rally. On next on rings is Ashley, which is a, a, a huge uh, athlete to watch for this competition. Not only this competition, but in the country, as he ranks you know, among probably the top three on rings. Yeah, he's definitely top three. He's been scoring upwards of 14.5 to 14.8 almost every single time. You can see how strong he is. He's actually a local guy. He came from um, gym in Sacramento. Came from Elevate oh, yeah. Gymnastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. He was just—he was actually a ring specialist in high school too. Kind of like you were talking about at your gym. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's very different from junior level gymnastics to college level gymnastics. Is like we talked about: high start values, high scores are key to getting that team total. And you have a roster limit, or a, you know, a, a team total cap of 15 members, um, and so you can have individual you, everyone just has to you know if you're looking to get 30 routines oh too bad to fall there but um as you can see there's so many strength skills in there uh, sometimes those dismounts are hard to pull around at the end and last that up, would have been a huge score. he was he was telling that i'm i can't wait yeah. to see the star value on that is this the last up for cal wow. on plum horse yeah, so it looks oh 14 exactly for Aiden. Just what you called, Scott. Oh man. But, oh dude, I'm sorry, I'm leaving I'm leaving the stream. I'm going to Vegas right now. Uh no, but hey, Cal hit their last guys on Pommel Horse. Um and with Aiden hitting that 14 and that and Will hit a pretty good routine right there, Levonical. That's gonna be a good yes, team so total for Cal. So this is Nick Kubler on floor. He is one to watch this year as well, I would say, in the national rankings. Um, he's so clean, so consistent in not only his form in the air, but landings as well. You can see he's just a really quite confident gymnast on floor, um, and not only confident in the basic skills that he does, but also some of the you know, highest level start value skills that he has in here. Yeah, he was a great like junior their last last guy. So it looks like their last guy as well. And, um, so my prediction is by the end of this rotation, it's going to be Stanford, Cal, and then Illinois. It looks like Illinois had some issues, maybe some nerves on rings. Maybe it was the, the travel. Um, but Cal was... Cal was the one to watch on this rotation for sure. While, while Stanford maybe beat them in, in this score, that's going to be a great problem start for them. Yeah, you know, I mean, like uh, like you said, the score might not re completely reflect it because Stanford had higher start values and they were on four. But that is going to be a, a tough total at 65. 55 65 is. Nothing shabby on Pommel Horse. I mean, it had that first guy hit. I mean, they would add a, a great, great, great score. But um, yeah, heck of a job for Cal. Like you said, Illinois, yeah, a little travel. Um, you never know, but rings can be tough. The judges are so tough on rings on how high you hold those strength positions and whether you've held them long enough, whether you get credit for that in your score or not. Um, but yeah, they missed out with Ash and got a 13 one. Um, even with that 5.9 star value, so usually he's up in the mid 14s. So they got to make up for it on the next event. All right, so like you said, Brian, Stanford killing it right off the bat with a 69. But I think the big tale here is Pommel Horse and Cal being in second with a 65, 
starting on pommel horse, being ahead of Illinois, who's on rings, usually an event where you can kind of consistently score a little bit higher. Yeah, I mean, totally. I mean, Cal, even with a fall, still went 65-6, which is going to be – they might win Pommel Horse's meet, depending on how – I mean, Stanford has had some trouble this year on Pommel Horse with its consistency. Um, so, so Cal might be up – Cal might win this event. Um, next rotation looks like we're going to have Illinois on floor and uh, Cal on rings, and Stanford's going to be on Pommel Horse. So what are we – what are we looking to see from this rotation? Well, sorry. Uh, per, per, first, we got first we got the leaders here. Um, obviously, the team, obviously uh, with the teams all being on the on their own events, you know, uh, in this first rotation, Jeremy scored the highest there. Um, the execution, I guess, is what we wanted to look at there. High eights from Stanford on all of those routines, um, and even this for for Cal. If you look at their execution, not bad for Pomeroy. Besides Tyler falling, uh, seven and nine. These judges aren't going easy on them either. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. And then lastly, rings. Um, and you can see, like you know, the execution is similar to to the guys that were on Pomeroy. The execution probably should be a little bit higher on rings. A little bit of an easier event because you're doing holds and stuff like that. If you can to execute, um, and it looks like. Illinois just had a rough time doing that. But anyway, coming up on the next event, like you said, Illinois is coming to floor. Illinois has a pretty hot floor routine, uh, floor team. Um, if you want to talk about uh, Evan Manavong, you got uh, Connor McCool. Uh, I, th I think those guys can do three and a half twists, quad twists. Lots of big skills coming up here from Illinois on floor. I think their star values are going to be pretty big. Yeah, this rotation will be key for Illinois to get back into the groove. Um, so, yeah, first up is Evan. Evan is another a very clean gymnast on floor. And then anchoring that spot is Connor McCool. Connor McCool has some unique gymnastics in his routine. Um, has Does some, you know, like you said, a three-and-a-half twist. He does... A double twist. He has, does a two and a half twist and double back, and you know his his landings are are has has how he uh, really capitalizes on that score. He has great landings. He has great air awareness to be able to um, put together some of these combination passes and, and compete that unique gymnastics. And then when we look over at Stanford, you'll notice that Brody Malone is competing. Brody Malone is first up, and this is the first time that we're going to see him compete this year. Uh, his last competition was Worlds, uh, so he took a little break from that um, to you know train some upgrades and and whatnot. And so he's going to be competing five events today. Um, we have a big lineup for Stanford um, and Cal again. Uh, looks like we're just getting going and people are just starting to be on air. And so um, Cal will look to continue their success from Pommel Horse onto onto rings. Yeah, I mean, I think they, I think that with their performance on Palmer, especially the way they ended, they're going to be pretty pumped right now, starting off on rings, um, which is what you want on that event, right? You know, you want to be pumped out of your and just blood coursing through your veins. Uh, just you do, yeah. You want to be, you want to go into all those strength skills with confidence that by the end of the routine, you're going to be able to, you know, you're still just, you're going to have juice in the tank to be able to finish it off. Is this uh, is this big Brody right here to start out as start us out on Palm Horse? This is Brody, so it looks like Tom put him up first. Um, that might be because he's an all rounder and may, maybe wants some rest um, to the next event, or he's trying to put the pressure on him. <laughs> yeah, interesting spot, interesting spot to put him in on his on the return, and especially on Palm Horse, which I wouldn't say is his number one event, but he's killing it. He's doing it. Um, yeah. Looks I mean, like Evan just finished on floor as well. Yeah, he was doing some side passes as we were getting getting on there. And, and uh, I think we finished the routine. Wow. Brody with a hit on Palm Horse. Definitely something you want to see out of out of the US, one of the US's top all-rounders. You know, we hit that Palm Horse team. And also, you would know, right? Like we said with Palm Horse, first guy up hits. It's got to feel good for the rest of the team. 
It does, yeah. It gives you, um, gives you the confidence going into that next, you know, that next, uh, athlete, really. So... Did you do explain to anybody why we're... I, I don't think we said that Stanford's putting up seven guys because this is a senior night, and so they put up a few extra guys. So we will end up seeing seven guys for Stanford um, just because a couple of them are going to be exhibitioning in their in their final competitions here. The the last two gymnast scores are not actually going to count for the team score. Correct. Yeah, they're going to just purely to get them in front of the judges, whether it's their last time in this in in Burnham Pavilion competing for Stanford or um, just to give Tom a good sense of what are these guys gonna score um, in front of the real job. You can you can do practice meets at home and and you know have your coaches judge you all day long, but it's it's different when you get in front of a judge and you have a crowd around you and you have you know your teammates behind your back. It's a different environment and it's a good way to show to your coach and show your team really that you are a competitor um, that they can rely on. So those those guys that are sixth and seventh and whether they're exhibitioning or whatnot, their goal is to get into that top five. Um, so like Luke here, Luke here is a sophomore. He didn't compete much last year uh, due to some injuries. He's from Massachusetts. He's from Daggett Gymnastics. Um, but he just put together another great routine for the Stanford Cardinal uh, to back up Brody's routine. Um, yeah, that was back-to-back -back great routines. And, and you know that dismount, the Russian dismount where you're spinning on your hands like that, it's tough. He did a great job of getting his body up really high as he finished it. That's really hard to do to get your feet up that high on that dismount. Um, also on floor, that's what's looking for is that angle that you got to hit a 45 degree angle with your body. On floor, Will Hawk, I saw him up. He, uh, he he landed every pass pretty cleanly. I think only his back one and a half twist to a front full twist did he take a little hop, but um, and a little foot movement on his dismount. But otherwise, that was a pretty clean routine too. So I think everybody's firing on all cylinders right now with all these teams. Yeah, this is this is great to see. Um, next up, you know, problems we have Asher and on. Rings, I'm not quite sure who is up. Um, Amari Stool just floor nailed right now, it. We have a, just nailed it. Yeah, this He's is awesome that floor is really good as well. Asher's ripping it up in the flares on Palma Horse. So two two big big routine gymnastics. Not sure what's going on with Cal. Looks like maybe they have an inquiry or something. Yeah, I don't I'm not quite sure. Like Asher's still knocking it out. This is, this is a long set, man. There, he's Asher. tired right now. He probably just has a dismount left. Um, well, that wasn't his intended dismount. He did get, he did get up, and he got credit for it. Um, so he'll, he's now on to the next event. Oh, it looks like the rings are like slightly off, or they need to chalk them, or something like that. On floor, Amari, Amari Sewell just did a full twisting double back for his dismount. It looked like he took a slight hop on it, didn't get a full stick for it. But I can tell you, I was watching that routine and I, I didn't see a lot of a lot of uh, steps on any of the passes. I think that was a pretty darn good routine. So right now, Stanford and Illinois are kind of dueling it back and forth against each other with their routine. We love to see that. Yeah. So to give some insight onto what may be happening on rings, it looks like, so if those rings are off at all, if they're not level, it can be pretty dangerous for the athlete. You, know, you can imagine just swinging on your own two arms. Um, you, you want those to be even, because if you're crooked, there's going to be more force on one arm than the other in, in that hand, and it can cause your, your grip to rip, it can cause you know some shoulder pain, and um, when you have these high-level skills, it's important that you know we, that they, you know, the, the equipment set up for that. Yeah, a lot of people don't know, but at the very top of the ring, right below the top of the ring tower, you can see these kind of big metal cylinders. And those are those are pistons. Um, back in the day, they used to use old school, just like springs. Um, but the gymnast has a feel of the bottom. And when that bottom, the bottom of their swing, when they're hanging, 
doesn't feel right, um, it, it really throws them off. And so you can't go through the bottom of a swing super powerfully and go as hard as you hard as you can when you're off in any way. And then, like you said, if one arm is hanging more than the other, you're basically doing a one arm swing on the rings, which yeah, you know, is really impossible. And that's why sometimes people will feel. So hopefully that wasn't what affected uh, Illinois. Uh, I'm, you know, we obviously want to have. I, that's what I was finish. thinking. So Asher just Asher's score just came in at eleven nine, and that start value of fifteen four seems a little low based on the length of that routine and, and the, the difficulty that I know that it is. So I'm wondering if maybe he was um, he was not given credit for a couple skills or, or or what maybe happened, or even that dismount that, that we saw. Um, I'm not quite sure. It looks like we have. I think the dismount um, hurt him a little bit, but it's tough with those flared skills. I gotta say that. Those flare skills mm -hmm. sometimes they really pay off, and then sometimes some judges really just don't think that you're splitting your legs enough, or you're hiking in your hips too much, or whatever it is. So um, that can really change change your score there um, when you do those flares. But funny enough, we have we have. So I'm I'm originally a, a gymnast from Region Six in Massachusetts, and funny enough, we have two Region Six gymnasts going right now, and another one up next. Um, Ian Lasik is from a gym called Mega. Uh, Levon is his gymnast, uh, is his coach, and uh, Jan is also from uh, Region Six. So, two two guys from Massachusetts uh, representing. Ian hit that routine so great that I didn't even almost realize he was going. Yeah, that was a rough landing on floor. Was that the discount? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. Jan, Jan with was that a two and a half, two and a half discount that he that shorted a, really hard. Yeah. Yeah, that was a two and a half dismount. He had a great, he had a great rest of the routine. Um, next up, we have Connor McCool. Connor McCool just came back from Winter Cup with his teammate uh, Ian Skirkian. What I was saying earlier was um, to to Scott was he actually was originally from Sterling Gymnastics as well, where where Ian Skirkian, and Stephen Adarazic, and myself are from. Um, so it's, it's it's cool to see these guys out here um, that I grew up, you know. Just a kid, you know, six and seven year olds, with, and now competing with them and against them. Um, this is one of those routines that I was saying is, is really unique. Uh, has some has some cool different skills in it. Two and a half twist and double back to to start off with. Um, so definitely keep an eye out for this. Yeah, and if you don't watch closely, he does a couple of skills where you think it's the same amount of twists, but you have to know how he takes off. And he, he twists so fast sometimes, it's hard to see. I think he's also an interesting gymnast to watch on floor because he's he's a little bit taller than most, most guys in gymnastics, but he spins real fast and he's power, he tumbles so powerful. And then you got Koi on Palm Horse over here. I mean, it's like a this battle in the tornado. That's what it is right now. I'm going to tell you. I mean, just spinning and twisting all over the place. Two guys just category five right here. And Koi's putting down a great set here, too. Ooh. And my eyes are just flipping back and forth and back and forth. Um, yeah, it's dude, I'm getting cross-eyed. <laughs> Connor's one of the only guys, too, that does a three-scale pass on floor so that he can get the bonus on uh, out of both. Oh, man. Boy, just hit that routine. Oh, oh baby. Boy, just put out the beast mode. Beast mode <laughs> chant there. Connor almost about to finish it up. I think that was a three and a half, right? It was, yep. And he goes into his dismount right here. And sticks it. Oh my god. That was a great finish he's for him. That was a great routine. Um, oh, he's so it was like a single layout that was way too easy for him. <laughs> Throw up from but just like came out of it like it was nothing. Alright, it looks like they have fixed the rings. It's really not a big fix, folks. I mean they gotta obviously they gotta put a 20 foot tall ladder up there and, and get up to the top, but it's just a matter of you know kind of unscrewing it a little bit. Um, they can change the length of the the ring fairly easily. So it looks like Koi is actually. 
Go ahead, go ahead. So I was going to say, it looks like Koi was actually the last gymnast for uh, the counting score for Stanford. So next up on Palma, we have Ian Gunther, and then we'll have um, J.R. Chow, both seniors, both uh, in the exhibition spot. Um, and so while there will be two more athletes on Palma Horse, their scores necessarily won't count for that team score, like we were talking about, just to get them in front of that, um, just get them in front of that judge spot, right? Right, right. and depending on what Koi actually scores here, looking at these scores, I mean, you know, Stanford has a good chance of beating Cal's score on Palma Horse, but it's going to be pretty close. It definitely is, yeah, I mean, it, which makes Cal's score that much more respectable. I mean, we all know that, you know, Stanford is number one at, wow, 14.65 from Koi, so... Um, it looks like maybe they did surpass Cal's score, um, but if they did, it's not going to be my much. No, no, not at all. Um, what I was going to say, about 10 years back, I, I want to say, when the NCAA championships was held at West Point, it could be less, um, they had the ring, the actual ring itself, break in half in the middle of the competition. And so then they had to take down the full ring power to be able to replace it. Whoa, what a save. What a save on Palm Horse from Ian. And a big score from Connor McCool as well with a 14-5 from a 15-9 from a start. 15-9 start is one of the top start values in the country. Um, and so as we were saying, Koi, Koi up and, and Connor up at the same time, both putting up head-to-head -head scores. Um, you know. That's going to help Illinois get back on track. And while it's the end of their rotation on floor, um, you know they they'll go into uh, Palmer Horse with some extra juice for sure. Yeah, it kind of helps you kind of forget about some of the other problems that happen when you have a guy come out and just rip up the floor routine and score fourteen five. We don't want to forget about Cal though. Now they're back on the rings. Jelani Sweet on the rings. What? It was a great routine. This would you give that? So that is probably going to get credit for a laid out half an FL. I mean, there's going to be some deductions for, you know, bent at the hips. You know, you, you want to be able to see the athlete doing it straight body, straight legs, um, all the way around. It looks like maybe he got hung up in the air a little bit and had to had to pike it around, shorten your body length, right? Um, so they're probably going to hit him maybe anywhere from one to three tenths on that. Um, it definitely looks like he was going for a late in half a half a half. Brian, you can come and judge my my kids anytime you want, buddy. Alright? <laughs> that, that was very nice of you to say. Um, I definitely, you know, re rings is so tiring. You get to the end of that rings routine and you're thinking, I gotta pull two flips around and for him he had to pull two flips around and twist. Um, your brain is flipped upside down, right? And it's supposed to flip upside down, but it's already flipped upside down. So it's tough to sometimes uh, remember where you are. I mean, uh, even the greatest gymnasts get the twisties, right? Yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, 12-4 for Ian. Not, not bad. You fought through that routine. There was a couple mistakes there. I don't think that's actually the difficulty that he was trying to show. Okay, no, this is Noah Newfeld on rings. Actually, Cal had him competing at the Winter Cup this last weekend, competed at USA Championship over the summer. Um, so, one of their better all round gymnasts. JR ripping it up on the palm horse with those players. So, it looks like JR is going to be our last competitor on palm horse, and he's. Uh, he's... Oh. He was fighting the whole way through. Um, but on rings, case, let's see how many more In case you're new to gymnastics, that was not a break dancing move on Palma Wars. <laughs> Just to let you know, when he spins on his back, that is not a move that JR wanted to do on Palma Wars. It was because he missed his hand so bad in himself. Now, that was a good dismount off ring. I'll say that. That was a great dismount. So it looks like. Even though Stanford had seven competitors, it looks like Cal still has two left because of the, the ring incident. Um, but we'll get them on full screen here soon, and uh, we'll talk to their routines. How about that, Scott? Oh, it counts. 
fantastic. Noah Sano coming up next. Younger brother of former Cal gymnast Capri Sano. Um, they used to, Capri, they used to call him the Juice. That was his nickname. You know, hey, you know what, Brian? Last week, I feel bad about this. Last week, uh, or the weekend before, Stanford was going against uh, the Bay Area Bandits, and I said something about, I said something about Brody's hair, hairdo, you know. And <laughs> sure enough, this weekend he had the haircut, and I was just messing around. The guy is a great guy. He can have whatever he wants. You know what I'm saying? I, was just, <laughs> I guess he what, took it to heart. Oh man, he just didn't shave it all off. It's just gone. But he looks good. <laughs> he all does. right, no one. Um, oh wow, that's a unique yeah. skill for sure. Yeah, you hardly ever see that. That's really like an international skill to tell you the truth. That's so hard to do right there, folks. He's pretty solid. He's, he's pulled in. This is like a good example of a, a, a routine that doesn't have a ton of rings difficulty, but has really good execution. Keeping his arms straight, keeping his toes pointed, holding stuff uh, that needs to be held for over two Mississippis, if you will. Oh, oh tough one. Man, rings today and those dismounts. That's what's been claiming people today. Yeah. I mean, I th so from from being on, you know, the college team just about, let's say, what, 10 months ago, again, Winter Cup is a defining date in terms of the college athletics, the college gymnastics kind of schedule. Before Winter Cup, you're testing out different routines. You're playing with, you know, if we put this skill before this skill, how does that test your endurance? And, you know, you're trying to pack in as much difficulty to increase that start value as possible while also keeping your execution score, um, you know, good as well. And then so, but after Winter Cup or, or that last meet after Winter Cup is really your last chance to get in any new added skills. So maybe what you're, we're seeing today is, um, I wish I was a little more f familiar with some of, you know, all of these guys' routine, but maybe this is their last kind of opportunity to put that, you know, whether, whether it's another iron cross or whether it's that, you know, that V cross that we're talking about. Um, it's their last opportunity to really get that skill in. Because after this, there's really like, what, Scott, three more meets uh, until, until NCAA day one? Yeah, I mean, they maybe they have about a month left. So when you're talking about putting the skill into a routine, it's really not that much time. But you really want to, no, you really want to use. It. I guess what you're saying is like a last little test to make sure that it, it's the correct set of skills that you want to put together and that you're going to execute the best. Uh, Christopher Scales here, strong guy, strong guy, really putting out some some good straight body uh, planges here. You know, Maltese just a second ago. I actually coached Christopher when he was a junior for the beginning of his career. Um, so he's a local guy from San Jose. Not too bad of a double layout, good landing. Then that's what, you know, that's what we were just talking about is you got to be able to finish that off. And with so many people falling on their rings dismounts, uh, you know, that's that's the smart thing to do right there, right? Is do the double layout that's not the as quite as high of a value as the to make sure you land it. And he was, he was last... So he was last up, Chris was last up, and um, Cal didn't have any um, exhibitioners, so his score did count, so Scott, you're exactly right, you want to get, you want to get that, you know, if they can get into 13, that would be awesome. Yeah, looking at, looking at Cal's score there, since they were just finished up, and obviously Christopher's score is going to get added to that, but, um, you know, it, it would have been great if they hit a few more 13s, but it's, it's hard to tell where those scores would be at because they had, had I mean, so many tough landings in this round, you know? When you have those bad landings, you know, yeah. it's tough to evaluate. Um, 
But anyway, going on to the other the other two uh, teams there, Illinois on four with a 66. Obviously much better than their Pomeroy score. Um, not quite as good as Stanford's floor score, though. And then Stanford put up a 67 on Pommel Horse. They beat out a cow by a couple points there. So that was a heck of a rotation. Um, it was cool to see the scores go up. Okay, Connor McClure four. took the lead. Yeah. You take it away, huge Scott. Route. No, yeah, huge routine. Um, you know, you look at that and you see, look, he had actually – one tenth more off in execution than Jeremy did, but the start value obviously was higher. He gets a higher score, um, and th that's the difference between a guy who's really specializing on that bet and going for something big. Wow. Your thoughts on Pomors? So, Coy looks like he took the lead on that one by almost six and a half points. Uh, execution scores are, you know, they're they're tight. Pommel horse is is one of those. Is even if you 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 see you've done a clean routine, the judges are still going to find something. Whether it's you know a little bent knees, a toe here, toe there, every circle you can get a deduction on. Um, so so those execution scores are all right in the in mid mid eights. Um, Aiden popped in there from Cal um, with a fourteen, which is a you know great score. But Sanford. Stafford should be happy moving on from that event, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And and lastly, rings, you know, and here's an interesting one because Ash, Ash and Anaya, like we said, is one of the top ranked rings guys in the nation and he ends up not being first today. So that's a that's a real, real crazy situation for Illinois where they are probably usually depending on him to throw out a big tour. Um, but still the top two ring scores so far. I'm going to put it in an unbiased uh, prediction here. After the end of the next rotation, Stanford will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's my, that's one, my prediction. Two, I'm putting that in there. Four, five. Well, you know what? It could come down to the end, as we've seen, you know? Um, we definitely saw a couple other good rings routines, and then all of a sudden those dismounts were a little bit tiring. and Or like you said, they threw a harder dismount today than they're used to. And um, Yeah kind of screwed over their score a little bit. So hopefully Stanford can keep it on their feet um, to make sure that Brian's prediction is correct. Otherwise, Brian <laughs> is not going to <laughs> All right. So folks, if you ever watched the gymnastics meet before, you're probably wondering why these guys are not rotating on to vault and key bars and high bar. We're actually going to do that after this rotation. Um, so the, in a tri-meet, so three teams, they always start on floor pommels and rings and rotate through those three as three teams, and then they then they switch to the other three events. And this rotation does not go without its heavy hitters as well, like like the previous rotations. We have some great guys on pommel horse. Ian Skirky just made national team, senior national team for the first time. Um, he has won national championships on Pommel Horse as well. Uh, Stanford has a stacked lineup on rings with some really great strength guys from Mark Belaga starting them off. Um, and Cal having some really dynamic routines on floor. There's some there's some really unique skills that the Cal guys do on floor. Yeah, I agree. Like Cal, Cal definitely has some interesting routines to watch on floor. Uh, this is the, you're right. This is a great rotation. I mean, we talk about Pommel Horse. Uh, Illinois has two coaches that were former Pommel Horse NCAA champions. Um, Rings. Uh, Stanford has Mark Berlaga leading off. He just and stuck it. Ring. Yeah, he just stuck a front double pike and nailed that Rings routine. And they have him leading off. And that's usually where you put a lot of times, you know, your lowest start value guy or. I don't even know what to say, but, they're consistent. but Stanford, yeah, the consistent guy. Yeah, you just put him up. They just put up. They just put a, a, a atom bomb up on a rings to start out with, you know. <laughs> just dropped it, uh, and then they got two more guys that are stacked after that that can all all American if they wanted to. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's a ton of great stuff to watch here, and we've already one guy's gone, and we already we already saw some stuff. So. Uh, exciting rotation.
Definitely, and I think it goes, you know, I think it's important to note Cal has been suffering some injuries, you know, this year, and I think that's been a, a theme that, that they've been seeing. Um, and Scott, I know that you can probably add to that a little bit of some background information maybe around that. Yeah, I mean, you know, Cal's had a, a quite a few big injuries, but uh, what they're looking to do is they, they started out the year with the highest regular season total they had in, in the 390s, which was a pretty darn good score. I mean, it, it looked like Cal was going to be in maybe you know the top six, and then they they had a lot of big injuries happen within a couple weeks after that, and they're just starting to come back from it right now. Um, yeah. So, you know, those guys that were injured, they've got to get numbers in and, and get their routines in and, and get back to it. Um, but like we were talking about, you know, this really can happen to any team right now with the way COVID is and everything. One guy on the team gets COVID and all of a sudden half the team is gone. Uh, Asher over there on rings, double-double laid out, little small hop on the landing, big, big routine. After Mark Looks already like scored a 4 5 Scott, I'm telling you, this prediction, I'll, I'll oh, double geez. down on it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> We're both going to Vegas. We're both going to Vegas. <laughs> oh, no. Pop Morris is... Illinois is having a rough time on Pop Morris right now. They are making both you and I look really bad about our, th our thoughts about that they would have a really good team today on Pop Morris. 11-7 from the first guy in the... Bastion just actually fell on out of out of his rushing, so uh, that's a tough yeah, one. It, like we said, you know, we're not even ha we're this meet's just getting started, Scott. So so they still have an opportunity to get themselves back in a groove. And, I mean, finishing with Connor's routine on 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 floor, you think it you know it gives that them that extra kind of momentum to keep keep those good scores going, and like we're seeing on ring with a fourteen four from. From, from Asher, they just each of these guys are just trying to one up each other. You know, whether they they hold that strength kill that little bit longer, or they stick that dismount, or um, you know, competitive nature within a team is definitely present within all of these teams, and, and, and it pushes each individual to to be better, um, but for the collective team, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. And, you know, I think, you know, having watched a lot of uh, college gymnastics and, and Stanford, obviously, from being around from the Bay Area, it's it's really tough to compete against Stanford. Sometimes, you know, watching these competitions, Stanford is so, you guys are so great in these last few years that, you know, sometimes the team gets a little bit behind and you just see the wind just get sucked out of their sails because you guys are just doing like what Stanford's doing on rings right now, putting up a bunch of 14s. There's, was that Brandon Briones with a, a nice landing? That there? was Brandon. Yep. yep. So, so there's going to be another yeah. one, right? And geez, man, yes. there goes there goes the wind in my sails. It's just done if I'm like falling on palm horse. But yeah, you got to fight through. You got to be competitive. Yeah. So we have Harrison on floor and David Pachinka on palm horse. Um, oh. I'm pretty sure Harrison is, uh, is Harrison a freshman? I'm pretty sure he is, so, you know, that freshman this far into the lineup, this far into the season, pretty impressive. Um, hopefully he has a good, good routine here. Oh, you like, with those, so, when we look at these dismounts and we're talking about different, um, you know, value skills, Scott, with dismounts at this level, we want to be able to do a D or higher. So that's, on floor, we're talking two and a half twists or more, right? Um, and so, so Harrison just did a double full, and the strategy behind doing a double full or a skill that's not a D or higher is really to stick it. Um, and so, so Harrison had a couple hops there, but, and even if you're going to have a hop, you really want to try to you know, limit it to one hop. Um, but it, the rest of the team looked great for him. So uh, Cal's chugging right along, and they're putting up scores that are respectable and very consistent. Um, so same with Stanford. I mean, is obviously putting up huge scores right now. I mean, Brandon almost put you down there with that 13-8, uh, even though it was a great. 
Now we got now we got big, big Mr. World Champion up on the rings. Uh, yeah, man, so his arms. Are, he has a tough time putting him behind his back. Yeah, so it's, it's being Brody's first routine since Worlds. It's, um, it's it'll be an interesting meet to see if he chooses to upgrade, if he chooses to just get back on that competition floor and get back into the groove of it. But um, Stanford has heavy hitters for sure. It's without no doubt. You know, not only do they have one Olympian, but they had they have back-to-back -back Olympians. Um, so Brandon Briones was Olympian alternate, and then Brody Ballone. To have those guys in one team, not only one team, but back-to-back -back on the same event is, uh, I don't know if it's been done many times before in NCAA history. I, so. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the historians could find, probably find some time, but it, it doesn't seem like recently that it's been that way. But it's like Stanford has maybe half the national team. It's crazy, you know, when you can put up a national team against uh, the rest of your team, I mean, uh, what, uh, what do other teams do? But Kalen Curry on no. floor right now, he's a, a big floor vault good. guy. He's actually from the Good Bay finish area. Good. Team. Yep, good. Uh, we got here on Pommel Horse, Will Hawk. He actually just fell off. So I think that yeah. I think that every guy on Illinois has fallen off so far. And Brody just topped Mark Belog with a 14-6. So they're going at each other, and Ian Gunther's no. Uh, Ian Gunther can't be left out of the conversation of you know, being last up. Um, but it's interesting looking at these scores, Scott. And looking at these scores, Scott, on on Palmos, if you add a point to all one of the every one of these scores, Illinois, like we talked about, is probably going to win Palmo Horse, right? So if they stay on, these routines are up there to, to fend against um, Cal and Stanford. Especially if, if uh, this winner, the Winter Cup champion here, was able to come up and put up a score like he did at Winter Cup. Totally. It looked like Ian had a little bobble there on rings, but um, so maybe my prediction won't come true. But let's see if he can finish strong. Oh, I don't know. Mr. Instagram, dude, he's gonna pull it out, dude. We get, he's got to go viral right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He needs this for the viral <laughs> YouTube video. Oh, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that was great all right so ian skierke up here on on pommel horse um this is a treat i mean best, if you're there in person best in the country get, right here. yeah it's incredible what do you think that number 42 means to him you know how much i don't you know scott i mean i how much he weighs. <laughs> Just saying, he's a, he's a skinny looking guy. I don't know. <laughs> I, I wonder. Sorry, sorry, not awesome. The real smooth rhythm. Oh. oh, not to miss. But you probably couldn't tell it. Oh, no. probably couldn't tell if you're at you know. Wow, what a great start on floor as well. The stuck front two and a half twist. Yeah, this is, I think this is Theodore, right? He's from, um, yep. right, I want to get this right. I want to say he's from Norway. I think you're right there. Wanna, yep. Is that the right country? He's putting, not he's good. putting together a solid set. Both of them. Ian, Ian maybe had a little bobble here and there, but he's probably going to put up, he will put up the top four score for Illinois and uh, might take the event title on that one. Um, yeah, I think that could be still a 14. Um, it'll be tough to go against Koi because Koi really hit. Um, and obviously yeah. that star back to be a little bit lower for Ian because he messed up a few skills. Uh, but like you said, yeah, he, uh, Theo is really hitting the floor, uh, obviously. And is he in the anchor position here? I mean, there's a reason why they put people he, in the anchor. He is. And he's nailing all of these landing. He stuck three out of the four clean. And it looks like Ian Gunther went 13 6 5. Nope, 13 4 5. The theater okay, finished. That was a, it was a great routine. Yeah, American American kids beware. Work out hard. Otherwise, otherwise, kids from Norway are taking taking your spot on the team. 
They can do good players. So either. it looks like. So that rotation Omaha is complete. My prediction. Oh, so, Koi beat him by two tenths on Pommel. All right, real quick halfway team summary here. Uh, I think we're missing one score from Cal, so I'll have to wait wait a second there. The other score needs to come in for Cal, but obviously Stanford running on all full cylinders right now with a 207, um, and Illinois behind them quite a bit with a 193. Hopefully uh, Illinois picks it up here on these uh, last three events. Love to see them get a in the 390s if possible at least it would be great for them if they were hitting above 392 a really. that's a great they are oh that's a, it's so a, close for second place it, yeah and only halfway through the competition it's uh it's gonna be a show Oh, yeah. I mean, who wants to watch Stanford right now? I mean, dude, they're just, I mean, the incredible gymnastics, but they're just murdering the other guys. I want to see who's going to win between these two teams, between Cal and Illinois. Uh, I'm not good at math, but I think that's a 1.3. One, 1. That's one fall, man. One fall. That is, that's crazy. That's crazy. The uh, four final listing here. So Connor McCool ended up winning the four for the meet, for the try meet today. And then, Two Stanford guys right after it, Jeremy and Jeremy and Asher. Um, and actually, to tell you the truth, Ryan, I feel like Asher had the higher start value and Jeremy had the better uh, better execution, and that's exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, exactly. And then on to Pommel's. Uh, Koi kept his position as number one, and... Ian, we saw, put up that 14.45 with a, a little bauble, uh, probably gone unnoticed uh, to most. Um, but he was really the, the, the star of the show for Illinois during that rotation. They struggled with a little bit of uh, falls from, you know, David and Will, uh, a few other members. Um, but as you can see, Coy still, still won it. Execution and start values and scores are very close. And... That's what that's what happens when you get to the top three. Um, it's, it really comes down to, you know, those those little fine details. How great is it for the U.S. that those top two guys are on on the national team? We have two awesome Pomos. Fantastic, right? Oh, it really is. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry, man. You're not going to be able to go to Vegas with me. Your uh, one, two, three, four, five prediction. I know, but I think that's. Him. I think this recording is going to be on a TikTok soon, probably. It's going to be me saying, uh, you know, that I thought Stanford was going to go top five, and then Ian messed it up. I'll have to, I'll text him. Right it's going to zoom in and be circled. Ethan voted. It's going to be circled right there. Oh, it's a tie too. <laughs> oh wow. Oh man, it's like they heard you. Yeah, I think. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's a still, I mean, you know, the Stanford's got to be happy, though. That basically is, like you said, one, I mean, there's a five next to his name. So it is one, two, three, four, five. Probably really awesome for Brody to if it's first meet back to, to get a nine on execution on a rings routine. That's what we were talking about that you should see on rings if you're really doing stuff correctly is getting that nine on the execution and obviously a 14 six of the score. Um, really and awesome. And they're on. You know, looking forward to the next event, um, they are going to be on vault, uh, which is another... I mean, if I had to choose Stanford's best events, it would be rings and vault. Um, P-Bars is up there, but definitely rings and vault. Man, you know, I, I feel like sometimes I've seen um, Stanford even almost beat their vault score in the past with their P-Bar score. Back when, uh, yeah. you know, in the last couple of years when, like, Curran was on the team and you had Blake scoring 15. So that's interesting for you to say. I, I do think that Stanford is stronger in their last three events. Um, but yeah. never thought that. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see. Yeah. 
I mean, when you can put out a video where you basically show that you're competing the top vaults that are in the FIG code of points, uh, yeah, vault's a pretty good event for you. Yeah. I don't think um, Ian's going to be able to use... Oh, is that what you're saying? You think you're going to end up on TikTok because of Ian? You know, you're pretty, that's probably what's going to happen. He's going to clip I think that. So. And that's, that's gonna what's going to make it. him go... Yeah. yeah, make sure you uh, get him to sign a contract with you before he actually does that. Um, well, he's just got to tag me, you know. <laughs> all right, all right, cool. <laughs> so we got a little bit of a break here in between switching the events. Uh they're, they're moving themselves over, getting the vault set up, doing their two minute one touch right now. Um, so far, really exciting. I, I think I think that if Illinois was really firing firing hard here, also. Is Watch this vault right here. here. Oh the amplitude gosh. on his vault is huge. What? Was that a three, was that a three and a half? That was a two and a half. Um, so maybe, maybe coming off of a Winter Cup, he's wanting to play that a little safe. Uh, but he obviously can do a higher level ball than that. So Evan Manavong just took that go straight to Ansan, which is sometimes really, really tough to do. Christopher Scales on P bars. Did rings earlier. Not too bad of a full twisting skill to Hanson there called the DM it off. And you put Asher up first on vault, and he's just throwing a nice little two and a half. No, no problemos for him. Next up is Brandon Brion, is one of the, actually the, the youth Olympic vault champion uh, prior to his time at Stanford. Um, he had some, had some injuries to recover from, uh, but oh, oh, that's a stick, I think. There we go. Oh my gosh, his toes are so strong. I literally <laughs> saw his toes dig into that mat and grab them like a hand. That was amazing. So, kids at home, work on your uh, toe strength and agility. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was amazing. That was a great vault, though, in the air. I mean, really nice tight twist. Lots of power coming out of his hands. Um, I think you know. I think he's had uh, knee surgeries before in the past. He's had knee injuries. So watch a guy that's had knee injuries come down and smoke that ball. It was pretty awesome. Chris Scales had a good P-bar routine. He had a good landing on his double pike. Let's see what score he gets here. Next up on P-Bar, Sean Shimizu, actually local gymnast. Ooh, another, is that Brody? Brody with a nice haircut, that with a nice Brody. standing <laughs> Like I said, Sean so Shimizu anyone, on P-Bar, local gymnast from Pleasanton. Go ahead, go ahead. So for anyone watching the YouTube stream, uh, I just put in the chat. If you guys have any questions, just put them in the chat, and uh, Scott and I will try to get to them at some point. Um, we'd love to have some interaction going on. Yeah, also, if you're live, if you're, I, they're probably not watching us, but if you're live and you take a selfie or a video or something like that and you come back and watch this, post it to Verdius. Or maybe even if you're at home, uh, post a picture of yourself watching watching the Verdius uh, uh, cast and tag, tag Verdius in it on Instagram. Lots of big, good routines going on right now. Ari Sewell with huge high bar routine. He's done great on both of his events today. I missed Koi's vault. Was that awesome? He doesn't look happy. So Koi actually just Koi just fell. And I, if I'm not mistaken, oh, that's yeah. Stanford's first fall of the day. Um, which well, I never want to see a fall. It was he was doing a big vault, um, and well, it happens sometimes, you know. But it's vault is one of their strong suits. Uh, so we're, we're, we'll continue on here with. Um, Zachary Martin, who I would love to see a triple full from him. What do you think, Scott? Oh, I, w I saw one earlier in the year, and I don't know why he wouldn't do a triple full every time. You know, if I could do his triple full, 
I'd be doing triple pull. You would actually call me triple pull. You would call me Scott triple pull. And uh, that's how I would walk around town. I'd probably have a gold chain that would say it too. <laughs> but you know, so, the thing is with Koi is he does a lot of different vaults. I'm sure that, you know, messing with different ones, getting that landing right, uh, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, we're talking a lot about vault. This is our last competitor on vault, and then we'll focus our attention on some of the other events. Vault's hard. I'm always distracted by it. Um, it's just it's a fun <laughs> event to watch, right? So, um, after this vault from Zach, we'll hop over to P bars and Hybra and look at some of the scores that have been coming in. And... I mean, vault is just so explosive, right? You get that one. You get yeah. that one chance. So it was a little off for Zach. They had a little. That wasn't Stanford's best rotation. Let's call it. But they're they stay most of them stay on their feet and they're moving on to the next one. Um, and all of them have fifteen two star values or higher, which correct. Not every team is doing that. So in fact, I would say most teams have a, a fourteen star value in there. Wow, Kyle with a huge dismount stick over there and a celebration. I don't know what he was doing starting the motorcycle, I think is what he was doing. <laughs> start that engine. Tyler, Shemitz, yeah, you got to start that. They got to start some engine over there, even with the lawnmower engine. Tyler Shimizu coming off the bars right there. Um, yes, twin brother of the guy before him, Sean Shimizu, both guys from from a gym in Pleasanton area, West Coast Olympic Gymnastics Academy. Um, so always cool to see twins, especially on the same team. Yeah, totally. You had a couple of twins on your team? We did, yeah, we did. Um, my, fresh, or my, my freshman year, they were, they were juniors, and it was, uh, it's, uh, oh. we have Gareth and uh, Barrett Weiss. One of them is a professional skier. He is. He is now. He's. If I'm not mistaken, he's on Team USA for skiing. Um, just a few years after graduating, they're some of the most athletic kids I've ever met. <laughs> they can do every sport that, <laughs> at the top level. Yeah. So right, next up on P bars, we have Tyler. We have Noah. Oh, this is Noah. Yeah. And on high bar, we have Ryan. And I'm not even going to try to say Ryan's last name, even though I saw the pronunciation for it. Illinois seems, seems to be putting together some... Illinois seems to be putting together some good routines, though. I mean, mid-13s is what you want to be looking for on... Ring, I mean, on high bar, and they're at 13.2, 13.4, so they're, they're floating right around that area. So, so they seem to be kicking into a new groove, um, which is great to see. Uh-oh, uh-oh, dance moves. Yep, yeah, they're getting into a real groove. I got to, you know, they're hitting the routines and they're hitting the dance moves afterwards. That's when you know you're I know that I know that Tom doesn't really let you guys do that on Stanford. I know, you know, very rarely are you allowed to celebrate unless you do an incredibly great routine, um, and that's understood. You know, respect them obviously uh, for the sport. It's great to see you guys yeah. celebrate them. It is, yeah, and I think you will see that from Stanford guys um, when when they hit a really great routine. I think what's most important from Tom's eyes is, is giving that respect to the judge. Um, once you finish your routine is to really, you know, respect the judge that, that they're, they're judging the routine and, and you know, make it, give it a proper finish. That's, that's really what Tom um, cares about. Yeah, I could see some of these celebrations, like the way that some of the guys scream, like, spit lit, like, you know, spit just going into the judge's eye. Because the, because the guys loud, right? Or just like some of the older judges may be like having a heart attack because this guy just screams so incredibly loud in like my face, you know? So, uh, yeah, I, it's completely understandable, you know, that this sport is slightly different than other sports. You know, each sport has its own decorum, right? Totally, totally. And so um, as we wrap up the final 
couple of routines. It looks like Stanford went 69.95 on vault, which isn't their highest of the year, but it'll put them right on path to continue to get a good score, you know, to complete this, complete this meet. Um, it, it's the not hand, their highest, but go ahead, go ahead. It's respectable. I, I was just saying, this is the first rotation that we're seeing some P-bar routines, and so Noah just got a 13-8, but the three routines prior to that were, were uh, pretty low scores. They were 12-8 and 12 and 11-6. Did you happen to catch what what happened with those? Yeah, I know. I know Tyler fell off um, right after right after he did a support skill. Um, I didn't actually see Sean's floor routine. I'm guessing he fell too, though, at some point in time. Um, Chris actually, Christopher, Chris hit his routine. So just bad execution there. Oh, that was a low landing. You know, folks. I mean, if when you see a landing. Um, I'm sure you know. You know when you see a good landing, right? But even if the gymnast doesn't move their feet, let's say, and they do a deep squat like they're in a Beyonce music video, that is not good. There's still going to be some type of deduction there um, uh, because it because of the way they landed. It didn't look controlled, um, if that makes sense. So, Scott... If we have a little break here as they uh, move to the next event, we just had our first question, Caden. Uh, why are we seeing more athletes do a fifth year? Um, is a fifth year because of the COVID? Um, if you want to take that on, feel free. Or we could chat about it after. Uh, I mean, you know, uh, yeah, I mean, here, here's the team scores. Uh, I think that some of the scores aren't, aren't in yet. Obviously, there's one P-bar score missing there. Um, but, at, you know, I think actually, Brian, you can probably talk to it better than I can because we were talking beforehand about you taking a gap year and the COVID year and not being able to figure out, you know, what you wanted to do with your college career and if the if the 2020 season was going to happen. And um, so for for most of you out there, I'll, I'll talk to the piece that doesn't have to do with COVID. Um, but if you know anything about all or college college sports, you are allowed to take one year. They call it your red shirt year. You're supposed to have a reason, like either an injury or, you know, something that you needed to do. You're not allowed to compete during that year, um, but you are allowed to have technically five years in college to do a sport. Now, Ryan, if you want to talk to what COVID allowed to happen, so that we, so that everybody can understand why COVID. they're seeing maybe yeah. Brody in this fit. Yeah. So COVID put a wrench in some things um, in the the twenty the 2020 season when COVID hit in March um, the NCAA allowed everyone to automatically get another year um, not only did they get that year back but they also got um, another additional year so you're seeing people like Brody uh, Ian Gunther and and many other you know athletes on, on many different sports and many different uh, teams taking this fifth year and so as these as 2020 moves on and you know four years after 2020 um, this fifth year situation of five years of an actual sport won't won't really be happening anymore um, if that makes sense uh, because really the NCAA you're allowed four competition years uh, you have four years of eligibility COVID was a tricky situation um so yeah that, you rarely that see another... right and you don't ever see it in gymnastics someone really wanting to like stick around for that much longer because the sport is so so hard on on your body physically that you know you're either trying to make it through those four years or you're one of those rare guys that's you know training for the national team and um so it's a little bit of a different aspect uh, but yeah, right. Soon we won't see the five-year guys really ever. We won't see that happen again anymore. Oh, it looks like Illinois pulled away a little bit, which is interesting because you wouldn't think high bar would be the event where Illinois would would start to pull away, which means that Cal had a really rough P bars. When you only have yeah, one I think guy. We were... 
Yeah. So Illinois is put, pulling away, and they'll probably extenuate that lead on vault just because when you're comparing vault total scores to high bar total scores, we're, we're naturally going to see a higher higher event total on uh, on vault. Um, but Cal will come right Cal will come right behind them uh, to to uh, to get that vault total. It'll be interesting it's to like see if Stanford like started. be close to their vault scores, especially since this wasn't their best vault day. You know, I think that you know that's probably what Stanford is shooting for. From having talked to Thomas Lee in the past, you know, um, he would he would always tell me that if you were P bar squad, you were they were always trying to beat the the vault vault squad in their score. So, oh my gosh, Connor McCool just nailed that ball. Um, I don't know what happened to Illinois after after the first three events, but they are literally on fire. And a thumbs up to the camera. Thank you, Connor. <laughs> we appreciate the juicy thumbs up. <laughs> um, yeah, they, they are kicking it into a new gear. Um, while Cal maybe struggled on P-bars, this first guy is up and they're, Whoa, they're hoping to kick it into a new gear. A super big arched banana look in a handstand on a high bar is not a skill, folks, just in case you were wondering. He was trying to save that. Oh, oh and that that's not a skill either. You cannot straddle Superman over the bar and get a better score for it. Two great oh. vaults to start. Wow, man, if he if he stuck that, what card would he have pulled out? Because Evan Manavong at what was that? Was it NCAA championships when he stuck his vault and then pulled his pulled his COVID vaccination card out of his uniform? Yeah, I think I it was just a red. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "I'm I'm vaccinated." I don't I don't know what that really meant with his landing. Okay, so Kalen Curry getting back up. Only get 30 seconds if you fall off an event to get back up on the event. Um, otherwise, it's a deduction. Whoa. He looked, like, he looked like he got thrown up in the air and just was just floating. He was like almost not flipping fast enough. I was worried for him to finish Evan that. Evan put a great score up on... Uh... Wow. On vault and, and while Connor and Evan did the same vault, you can Evans was super clean, just like Michael Fletcher's there. What Michael Fletcher just stuck that vault. On. Oh no, dude! I mean, look, you know, folks, if Illinois had been doing this from the first event, they they would probably be pretty close, pretty close to Stanford. I don't think they'd be beating Stanford by any means, but. This is like night and day. This is like two different teams that we we just saw in the first three events to these two. I feel like Michael Fletcher used to do all round and I feel like he hasn't been doing all round lately and he's a really good gymnast. Yeah, I I think that he I think any high-level gymnast like that, he's been he's had some injuries that he's had to battle through, um, but I think he's he's probably doing his best events this this year uh, this meet, which I would probably say is vault and um, I believe he's on high bar. High bar, yeah, yeah. This is Jr. on P bars. This is Jr. and Jr. has a huge start value as well, so it's a routine to watch for sure. Um, these, you know, super intricate, super technique-based skills called a Healy. Uh, he just did two in a row right there. Um, another Piatti, what that is called, is an intricate skill. Uh, as you can imagine, if you're a, a viewer that isn't familiar with gymnastics, you're letting go and then re-grabbing these bars, and you have to be super precise with your hands. And uh, But Jared just killed that routine. And uh, that's actually Miles Stanford's first competitor. It looks like Stanford's first competitor, so JR was first up, and it's a good good way to start. Um, but these other events are moving right along. We had to get another Vaulter right now. Huge Alex. 
Seth Ornelas just hit his high bar routine pretty darn good, but they're going to have to make up for a 10-0 from the first guy in Cal. That's a yep. tough one. <laughs> when, you, when you count a 10, you are really having yeah. to work hard that back. But Amari might have just bumped out. Amari might take the lead on vault for Illinois. Uh, it was oh, I missed super it. Did he clean. Stick? He did not, but boy, was it a high vault. And it was really clean and super powerful. Um, so they're closing out that rotation. Super happy going into the last one, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, if Will Hawk had done just a little <coughs> bit higher start value vault, I mean, that's that's not a shabby vault team score right there. Um, not. How about that? How about that? What do you got next there, Ian? Ian Lasek Ellis on uh, P bars, another another Massachusetts guy. And it feels like you know another Massachusetts. Guys. Yeah, it feels like half of Massachusetts is out here on the West Coast. <laughs> well, when you grow up with snow, maybe you don't want to live there that much longer, right? I grew up in California. I, I you're not going to see me moving out there ever. <laughs> But Ian Lysak Ellis also is. Ian was at Winter Cup this past weekend as well and earned a spot on the senior national team with a few other Stanford members, um, seven to be exact. Um, so he's only a sophomore, which is uh, he's had he had quite a good last year and uh, this year is seemed to be putting together equally as good as performances man he was such a good junior gymnast man i remember i remember seeing him when he was about 10 years old do a skill that i i could never do in my career um and it yeah. just just made me sad for myself but feel good for the kid for pretty sure. good landing a little bit bent over there a little bit bent over so the same as you can't do a big beyonce spot you also can't get you know bend over and kiss your shin um, both of those. Also, if, if you land and your feet aren't moving, but you circle your arms like you're trying to fly, you're also going to get a deduction, even though you had saved yourself from falling or taking steps. So just be aware of that. If you're a, if you're a fan and you're watching and your gymnast doesn't quite get the score that you thought that they should get, if they look like Flappy Bird when they landed, uh, yeah, there is, it's still a problem. Totally. And, and so we have a couple uh, Stanford competitors left and uh, a couple left on Cal. Uh, Scott, we have an interesting question in the, the chat that um, I don't know the answer to, but it's an interesting conversation. Mid-season is a tough grind. Do teams do anything outside of the box to stay motivated? Um, that's a hard question. That's an interesting question. Um, do you have anything to say, Scott? I think well, you know, I mean, I don't know if I mean, you're, you would have to talk from experience. I went to the Air Force Academy, so basically everything was outside the box compared to what everybody else does when I went there. Um, but I do know that, you know, when teams go on travel trip, right, a lot of times the team, uh, the, the team, you know, tries to go and do something or, you know, try, try to just get out of the gym, I guess, basically. I think uh, people don't realize how much time, especially college athletes, spend in the gym. You just get this real compartment syndrome and uh, yeah, you just need to refresh yourself. So I don't know if it's like, I think this person's looking for us to say like, oh, they go on a ropes course or, I, you know. Yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. think it's so, you know, as much as like camaraderie or just little trips or things that the team does. I think also that I could be wrong and you'd have to talk to this. But I think you guys do more stuff in the off season, really. Yeah. So that's a, um, you know, I think that you each athlete kind of has to find their own groove of of what you know. You can get so tied up in the season and and you know the the scores and the everyday grind of being in the gym and and whatnot. As far as how how I treated it and and how most of the Stanford guys I think treat it is. When you're in the gym, 
gymnastics is your main focus. That's all that matters when you're in there. You block out schoolwork, you block out, you know, whatever personal problems or personal struggles you may be going through. Um, if you have a test the next day, you block that out. Um, when you're in the gym, you focus on what's at hand. When you're outside of the gym, you can think about gymnastics if you would like, but it's really about, you know, figuring out that mindset of how do you how do you switch on and off your different, you know, your different brains? You, you know, you, when you're in the gym, you're an athlete. When you're outside of the gym, you're focusing on getting your work done, you know, and, and, and staying committed. Um, and, and to kind of hit that reset button, yeah, there's certain things that, you know, we would do, you know. We would go to the beach, you know, for a few hours and just relax. We'd stay out, we'd, you know, we'd sit outside or, or whatnot. Um, so there's definitely things that every athlete has to get into a groove. Um, so that's what I would say to that. I don't know if that fully answers the question, but that's my two cents. No, I have some more to say, but um, Brody obviously just hit pretty well. A few little, a few little missed handstands there, things that he could have probably done better. 14-1, incredible score, though. Noah Neufeld just had a great high bar routine, scored a 13 for Cal. That was great. And then Theo here. Um, just knocked out another one. So that's a good ending for Cal on high bar. We got Asher on P bars right now. Looks like he's getting after this hardcore. Ooh, that was a little bit off to the side, a little bit of a bad angle there. Um, but to go back to that as well, you know, I think each gymnast is in a different position, right? So on Stanford, you guys have a lot of all rounders because all these guys are trying to make national team. Um, so pro Tom's probably, you know, that's part of Tom's job is to. To really like periodize and make sure that you guys aren't getting worn out you know that's probably why brody's doing five events today instead of six um all kinds of stuff like that right because you have your event specialists you only have to do one or two events and then you have the guys that are doing all around and you got to kind of mix that up to make sure that everybody stays healthy enough and at the same time yeah. everybody is getting in the right amount of numbers to hit right Totally, yeah. And we had another interesting question, which um, is all these guys, Scott, you see when they put their arms up and they're measuring the width of the P-bars. Um, why are they doing that? Well, you know, I mean, the funny thing about that is, is that we all say that from your elbow to the end of your middle finger is technically your shoulder width, right? And so in general, as gymnasts, we try to do the parallel bars around our shoulder width. Now, when you get as wide as a Brody Malone, I mean, he's like, he's like two of me's wide. His muscles are so big. You probably end up turning it out more than that. You might end up turning it out a full another one of your hand widths plus the elbow to your middle finger. Um, just to make sure you have yeah. enough room to swing through those big old biceps of yours, you know, if, if you're that type of guy, and to make sure that your your shoulders are more flexible when the bars are wider. Um, so everybody has their own width, and it just it just so happens when you're an adult that your forearm doesn't grow any longer, and so you can use that as a consistent measuring tool. Yeah, and so the P bars are actually customizable in width. So so you know from from JR first up to, to, to Jeremy, each of those athletes has their own preference of, of how wide they want to be, be swinging. And so um, with that in mind, we, Jeremy finishing off with a beautiful oh. stick. That's a way to you know, finish that event. Um, Stanford had some struggles, but they, they fought through it and they had, you know, that's probably going to be three scores of 014. Um, and putting out some really big uh, really big start values as well. And so we're moving on to the final rotation. Yeah, this has really actually been going really, really fast. You know what's funny to look at right here is that uh, Illinois is actually losing by 1.1 to Stanford before Stanford put in their last four. Um, but Illinois is doing great right now. That's it. Nothing to do against Illinois. They are, they are, they, I don't know if they had a pep talk, you know, in football, right? They supposedly go in at halftime and have this big pep talk and, you know, the coaches get mad and they throw chairs and, you know, whatever, whatever's going on. Gymnastics, you don't get to go in the locker room at the halftime and have a pep talk. So I don't know what was said uh, to, uh, to Illinois, but 
they done done it, as some people would say on the last couple of events. Um, yeah, seven one seven. Yeah. Woo. That's beating Stanford by almost two points on Vol, and if I'm not mistaken, Stanford is the leading team. They are. They are, according to Road to Nationals, they're the leading team on vault. So Illinois just beat them out by over a point. No, just under a point. So you got to take that as a victory, no matter what Stanford decided to put out um, as vaults today. You know, for Illinois, they've got to they've got to walk away saying, "Yeah, we beat them today." You know, and so they they have that chance to be a, a great vaulting team. Same thing for Cal on Pomerce, really to put out. Uh, a pommel horse score that was that close is pretty darn good. Um, so, part way two, two events in to vault. Yeah, you can see Illinois with uh, one and three there with Evan Manavong and Michael Fletcher. Um, make, makes it tough for Stanford to catch up with some of the landings they had. And especially if you have a, a guy like Coy who can score, he can score a 14 easily. He can probably score a mm -hmm. high 14. And when he scores a 12, tough to make up for that. How many events has Bush won today so far? So, I think that's two for him. Uh, and uh, he's pro he's definitely looking to win Hybra as one of his specialties. Uh, so, as we're looking at parallel bars here, Stanford has a great had a great rotation. Um, we're still waiting on Jeremy's score it's still on eval uh, but he will be up there i would assume within the top five as well um so stanford has a strong parallel bar team um so they did they did edge out some of the cal guys uh but they were moving on to their final rotation of high bar, which is also a strong event and jeremy bischoff just took the lead with a 14-3 on he just got that that's why that stick, that stuck landing really matters. If you're, if you're a younger gymnast and you're not practicing sticking, um, you know, I don't know. I don't know what you're doing because it means a lot. Did you see that question in, in YouTube? Do you know any Stanford gymnasts that are taking a fifth year next year? Oh, and real quick, high bar. I mean, we saw that rotation. Illinois was going so off the chain. Yeah, they've got the top four guys. I mean, it was easy to see when you were watching them that that they were on top of their game on high bar. Yeah, they did. They they killed it. They did. A, they did a great job. Right, those executions right around a, a nine zero. That's what you're. You know, that's what you're shooting for. One one to one and a half points off. They actually had a three way tie for first, which is crazy. Um, yeah. But we're headed into rotation number six with a lot of routines to get through. So it's going to be an exciting rotation six. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, if we want to jump into the chat, uh, do I know of any guys taking a fifth year? I don't know of any. I'm assuming that, you know, this is still an opportunity where, where guys are, you know, weighing their choices of whether they're going to take a fifth year or whether they're going to um, go to grad school. Um, so I don't know of any yet. Um, I'm sure we will see that in the coming months, especially after NCs. That's when the final decisions will probably be made. <clears throat> the next, the next question that's really starting starting to debate here is if there's any rival, rivalries in the sport. Um, and then the, there's a there's a comment down <laughs> there that that everybody versus OU and OU is going on the run, and. Uh, yeah, I don't. I know. think whenever I mean, you're a good team, you have a target on your back, and so there, whenever there's targets on your back, there's rivalries that are built. Um, but with gymnastics, again, they said it's being such a small community. Those rivalries are inside the gym, inside the competition floor. Um, from my experience, uh, you, know, it's a, you know, it's a small community. So whether you grew up competing with these guys or training with these guys as junior gymnasts, um, the rivalries are are purely based on competition not uh personal if that yeah i think you sense. hit it on the head I, mean, I think that ou is so consistently good that they're always on people's mind of, the, of one of the teams they they want to beat i mean stanford is in that conversation obviously now you know has always been um and then also oklahoma has a few other things like their 
win streak at home and other yes. things like that that it makes it so that other teams really want to beat them um, and like take that well, take that away from them you know keep those questions coming in the chat but let's hop into some of this gymnastics so we have Brandon Briones on high R. Um, he did a few release moves. One, he had to he had to struggle over the high bar. Um, again, he's this is his first season back uh, since the Olympics. Um, so he is, you know, he's going to be a valuable asset to the Stanford team this year, and obviously put on a show with a really nice stick at the end of that routine. Um, Okay, hey, Jelani, we double pull. You have 14. And Kyle, Kyle, I didn't see his routine. I saw his dismount, and then I saw him hit a robot afterwards. So it must have been a fantastic routine um, with Illinois' uh, dance squad going off. Here's Kaylin Curry at a season high last meet, but that, this one he put his hands down. Must have hit the board bad. This Brandon Brandon Win next up on uh, high bar. This is yep. Um, I think one thing that could be interesting to talk about is what are these teams' mindsets going into each of these events? You know, it's looking like Cal. It would be a tall asking for Cal to beat Illinois, and, and like uh, and likely. Um, not going to happen, and likewise, Illinois to beat Stanford is a tall asking as well. So, each of these teams is kind of in a league of their own. They're they're really competing against themselves because going into oh, the sixth whoa. rotation is only so much that can happen. Um, but so their mindsets are interesting as well. And Scott, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, you know. I each coach is going to be managing their their teams their own different way. I mean, it, like you said, if I'm Illinois, I don't want to let Cal creep in. If I'm Cal, I want to try to catch up to Illinois, especially going on vault, right? And and then for Stanford, they're just in such a league of their own. I think that they're just chasing a score right now. Um, yeah, you know, making sure they get themselves back up above that 410 level. But right now, really, to tell you the truth, what it looks like Illinois is doing is just – really keeping the vibes high um, I mean the last two guys with their celebrations and, and all this other stuff and the way they've been hitting the last two events and then coming into P-Bars they're hitting this event too tell you the truth it looks like Illinois is trying to figure out how to compete you know it looks like they didn't know how to compete in the first three events and now alright they look like a, a college team that can get rowdy and get things going yeah totally and we actually have Michael Fletcher up here on the uh, parallel bars again. Uh, one of his strongest events. We'll see some really big skills from him. Um, and we have Jay, we have Brandon Briones. Oh no, we have Brandon Wynn on high bar. He Connecting. is throwing huge lifters right now. Wow! Did you see that vault? No, I actually just look, look at the chat like right as the vault went. What happened? Did you stick it? It was a triple full, and it was very oh, well okay, landed. So, so I think we have a new vault lander. That's Jasper Smith Gordon, and he w was a British junior national team member. Um, he actually competed internationally for a while. Um, it w he he was really great on floor and vault. He had a knee injury last year, so he didn't get to compete for Cal in his freshman year at all. But yeah. He is one to watch out for on vault if he can really get it together. Yeah, and I think he just took the lead on vault if we're talking about individuals with a 14.85. Oh, wow. Yeah, 14.85 is a, a big score. Obviously, though, you know, Stanford can put up, um, you can see Jasper's difficulty there is a 5.6. Uh, and Stanford has a couple guys who can do five sixes and actually a, a few guys that can do six toes, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, they have um, Asher can do a six o. Um, I think Koi can also do a six o. Um, Half on off or something like that. I think that's like yeah. I think up, he. Up I think he's working it. Um, 
again, when you're a coach and you're actually weighing the decisions of adding an extra half, you know, sometimes it's just the better move to to do a still a very high value vault of a five six. If if your five six is your backup plan, and you know you're gonna land it. Uh, you're in a pretty good place. <laughs> How dare you do a five six? You know. <laughs> But that PBRs. does. Yeah, that does wrap up cows meat uh, with an, a 386.25 uh, final score. So now we have the other teams chasing. Yeah, you know, I don't think that's that's not necessarily a bad score for Cal with still having a bunch of injuries. Um, obviously, not the score they want, considering they've already scored higher than that. Um, earlier in the year. No dance out of Will Hawk, so obviously not an incredible routine, either that or he is just not feeling it. Um, but I thought it was still a good routine, so I think Illinois is still firing on all, all summers. I think that they're going to still take down Cal. And this is a um, big routine from ask, Ian. Yeah. I saw someone else ask if all these scores are going to count on high bar, and no, only the first five guys are going to count towards the scores. This routine from Ian is getting to give Brody a run from his own. He did a three really high-level release moves and some technical moves to uh, right to a handstand, and then stuck that dismount. I, that's definitely an upgraded routine for him, uh, and that is going to be a huge score for him. When you upgrade a right, you're you're at a zero in the tank of gas. Last event, high bar, you've upgraded. Then you gotta throw two straight clips with two twists and you end up sticking it. <laughs> you know what? You're gonna sleep good tonight. All right, is this Mr. Pachinka up on, uh, on P-bars here? Um, I think if I'm correct, his brother uh, competed for Minnesota. And I think so, actually it was David on Minnesota before they dropped their David program. was on Minis David was on Minnesota's team and uh, then transferred to Illinois when when Minnesota's team uh, got cut. Uh, has been you know at, at Illinois I think this is his second or third year there. Uh, definitely a P-bar star. Definitely has some really great skills on P-bars. Um, and so he'll be happy with that routine. That was a really clean double front. I mean, he didn't pull his legs all the way apart, which we call cowboying. Um, if you've never heard that before, when you're in that tucked up position and the guys pull their knees like farther apart than their shoulders, looks like they're giving birth. That's actually a deduction. They're supposed to have their knees closer together. And he did, he did a really good job on that. And his feet were close to the landing. It was a really solid looking landing. No, no, uh, no booty dropping, you know, so. Uh, good job, way for good way for Illinois to end their competition, and now we just get to focus on Stanford and their senior night and all these extra guys that got. Ooh, oh least, man, you don't see that. Whoa. whoa, you never see that. Whoa, oh my gosh, that was almost dangerous, man. I've I've never seen someone be able to push off of a, a German giant like that. That's what they call that, folks. When you put your feet in like that, and you're you're still going around the same way that you were before. Call it a German giant. Um, and he must have had a, He looked down at his grips when he came off, so he must have had a problem with his grips, either slipped or uh, got a little yeah. bit of the leather caught in between his hand. I don't know what. Uh, you think we should see him it? repeat the skill. He should repeat it, I would assume. Um, or, or maybe not. I'm not, I, um, not sure quite what happened there, but um, he'll try to finish up this routine strong and, and, and put a – Put a, a, a score on the board that'll help Stanford. You know, put together a score that um, they want to see this at this time of the season. I think the one thing to note is that while Stanford might be the one with the target on their back this year, they are ranked number two when it comes to the national standings. That's because well, one they lost to Oklahoma last a uh, couple weeks ago, and two they had a you know when you look at the averages and you look at the the team rankings. Um, you know, I think that Stanford had some scores that that didn't match up to what what Oklahoma 
you know, was, was putting up. Um, so they want to, they want to be number one going into NCAAs because what number one means when you're going into NCAAs is that means you get to pick the event that you start on. Um, and that, that can be a deciding factor, you know, for some teams, whether, you know, getting into a groove of a meet, like we're talking about, um, you know, so that's, uh, they want to be back number one. And uh, this routine right here from Brody will definitely help them do that. 12-5 is not a bad score with a fall. I mean, definitely he's got to still be pretty happy with that. Um, you know, I mean, Stanford is number two. But this happens, and I was talking to you earlier about this, Brian. I, I For the last three years that you guys have – Stanford has won national championships. At the beginning of the year, I know who was on the roster. I keep telling everybody, oh, yeah, Stanford's unbeatable, blah, 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 whatever else. And, I, and because they have so many national team members that they have to rest for different competitions and because there's so much going on with the COVID and everything else like that, I think that you guys have lost one competition, Stanford's lost one competition, or not been ranked number one or something like that um, coming into the end of the season every year. And then the last three years, you guys just completely put it together and then smash it at, at NCAA. So I think that that was also the case against Oklahoma. Um, I think the team, if I, if I remember correctly, when they went against Oklahoma this year, half the team had COVID. So, you know, you're sending half your team out to compete against Oklahoma at home. That's usually not a good situation. Um, so I think it's going to be a different, uh, a different story, even though Oklahoma is putting up really darn good scores. You got to look and say, hey, Oklahoma has zero national team members and Stanford has like half the national team members. So if Stanford can't beat Oklahoma in the end, our national team is in trouble, um, but you know, I think this is where really gains gains some steam and and really starts picking it up on the scores. Um, today will just be a stepping stone for them, and they'll just use yeah. that to to really really start pumping up the the level of what they have going on. Yeah. I, I I agree with that. You know, I think if you know when you're Tom and you're you're crafting you're crafting what does the entire season look like when you have five, six, seven, eight national team members, that season looks a little bit different than just a typical NCAA season because you, you have to take into consideration the, the, um, the national standings and the world stand. You have to take into consideration how do worlds fit into this? So, so you have to rest Brody and you have to, you know, Asher was also there and then, you know, to make the national team, you have to compete at certain competitions like Winter Cup. So you have to take into consideration, you know, when when these athletes are peaking. You know, you want them to peak twice. You want them to peak at at Winter Cup, and then you want them to compete to peak at at NCAA's. And so, so it's a it's a it's a tricky type of uh, situation. Um, but we're just starting to see now, you know, what Stanford has to offer now that the Winter Cup season is over and now that these national teams have been picked and and they're back full competing um so but we they're yeah, putting I mean, together I some see, some good high bar routines which is good to see yeah they're not they're not the best though i know that they can they could score they could throw up like all 13 they could throw up five 13s for sure brody could throw up a 14 for sure they've got taylor burkhart over here on the sideline He's huge on a lot of events. In fact, we didn't see Taylor compete at all today, did we? No, we did so. not. I think he's uh he's he's recovering from some some uh, possibly an injury is maybe what I heard. Um, but he should be back in the mix come NCAA's. So they're missing Taylor Burkhart, huge huge uh, guy on, on their team. And you yeah. know, like we saw senior night, we saw the big big head of Riley Loose. Where's Riley? Riley's. I mean, you go ahead and tell him, Brian. Brian Riley's off of the national team. Riley is competing in uh, at the at the Baku um, competition with uh, former Stanford Cardinal Blake Soon and uh, Kern Phillips. They're off representing Team USA 
Um, so right after Winter Cup, they uh, they gave him an assignment for Baku, and so that's where Riley is right now. But he will also come back into the mix. You know, he's a floor guy. He's 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 a, he's a, he's another all rounder that can that can help Stanford on every event basically. Yeah, so they're missing out on two guys tonight that they could have used on almost every event with Taylor and Riley. Um, so even you know even with that, even with with this 4-10 that they scored, they can score a ton higher, and they're not even they're not even firing on on all full cylinders. You know what I'm saying? Uh, whoa, yep. interesting. But it does look like Ian just. Uh... Just finished up. That's the final routine for this competition. We'll probably get some slides and some uh, graphics up here of uh, to wrap up this competition. But this was a great meet. I had a great time, Scott, and uh, we saw some really great gymnastics. And uh, we saw a battle of Illinois and Cal through those three events. Illinois ended up picking it up uh, after probably a pep talk, and uh, Stanford was consistent throughout. Had some. Had some ups and downs, but uh, all in all, it was a great time, Scott. Yeah, I mean, I had a really fun time. And, uh, you know, anytime I get to watch gymnastics, watch any college gymnastics and just sit here and talk about it is is, is awesome. Um, but when you look at these scores, I, you know, yeah, like you said, this is a real test event. You guys are going to, the coaches are going to go back and use this to figure out how they can score higher. But all these teams have already scored higher than this this year. They had a had a little bit of a rough time. Stanford had a little bit of a rough time on high bar. Each of them had their events that were a little bit tough. Like you said, Illinois came out after the first three events, and I don't know what was going on. We couldn't hear sound at the competition. I don't know if they had a boom box over with their team, but they were locking out every landing and every event and then just you know, hitting the robot afterwards, doing whatever else not they needed to do to keep the energy up. And I think it really showed. I mean, if you look at their last three event uh, team scores, not that far off from Stanford. Like we said, they beat them on vault, uh, only two points behind on P-bars, and then they beat Stanford on high bars. So uh, not too shabby when you're talking about a way to end. Totally. And we'll probably get into some event leaders here. We'll look through the... Uh... Who ended up taking the titles on what event? I think that we know generally hooked who took the titles, but we'll go through the top three. Yeah, obviously Brody's not going to be that happy with uh, not being able to take a college high bar event title when he's a world champion on high bar, but um, <laughs> how things go, right? So, floor that once is... again, obviously like just said, Connor. So yeah, Connor took the took the event title with a 14-5, and then we had two Stanford gymnasts follow that, Jeremy and uh, Asher. Hommel's once again the two two uh, national team member guys that hitting their hitting their uh, routine pretty hard at the top. Obviously, we've seen better out of Ian, but Koi hit a heck of a routine. Those were both enjoyable to watch. Huge start values. Still rings and coming in on still rings. Yeah, go ahead, Brian. And coming on still rings, uh, Brody, first appearance this year, pulled it through with a 14-6, and followed by two Stanford gymnasts, Mark Berlaga and Asher Hong. Stanford also taking one through four there, which is a big deal. Vault, uh, like deal. we said, you know, Brian, Brian knew it right when the guy landed, but Jasper Smith Gordon, um, huge, huge ball and a uh, good, good landing, great execution. Uh, tough to compete against the guy who's been on an international stage when it when it comes to vault. But Evan Manavong put one down, and so did Michael Fletcher. Um, tough, tough vault day for Stanford, where they usually shine. And on to P bars, like we said, David Pachinka, uh, former. Minnesota gymnast now Illinois is at a 14-6 took the lead with a 9-1 execution looks to be the highest execution so that proves right there execution while start values have a lot to do with it execution can make or break it um, coming in the second and third are two Stanford gymnasts Jeremy Bischoff and uh, Brody Malone um, and then uh, but a close race on P-bars which it always is I feel like yeah, a bunch of 14s and 13s there. 
Okay, high bar, and, and you know, like I said, you know, you got you got a world champion here on high bar, and he's not even in the top three. Good to see Nick Kubler come up and, and throw out a big one. Unfortunately for Stanford, I don't think his score counted, and I don't think Ian Gunther's score counted either. Um, so maybe Tom's going to go back and take a look at that, and maybe maybe throw them into the roster. And that's what we were talking about: is you use this meet to figure out uh, what what your what your actual roster should be. So maybe. Maybe Nick Kubler and Ian Gunther are gonna we're gonna see them in the next competition, maybe one and two or maybe four and five. But congratulations to Nick on winning and uh, two Ians in a row there. It's crazy. So in the all around, it looks like Brody took the took the win. Other than he didn't do all around. Um, so the top uh, all arounders are Brody, Asher, and Tyler, both competing five events. It looks like. Um, that's a perfect explanation of college gymnastics there is like there were no all-rounders nobody did all round and that's really what makes up a college gymnastics team is a bunch of event specialists that are throwing up the highest scores rarely do we actually see an all-rounder on the better teams right um, anyway good job guy uh, good job to the teams Stanford, great job. Obviously, other teams, good job too. They got to work on it. Brian, it was a great, great time uh, talking to you, talking gymnastics, man. It was too. We're signing off for now, and uh, it was a great uh, competition. Stanford ended up taking it, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you next time.